This video will cover the syllabus for English 1110 First Year English Composition Spring 2017 um, online section. If you have not watched the video under uh, Week 1 Overview yet, and, um, underneath Course Module, you should go ahead and do that now. So, Course Overview. My name is Christopher Johnson. Um, my email address, you can find this again in the syllabus, is johnson.5402 at osu.edu. Phone number, and I encourage you only use this in uh, emergencies and be considerate, so don't call me at like past 9 o'clock at night, um, is 803-646-9068. And again, this is for emergency purposes only. Stuff does come up, and I understand you need to get into contact um, rather quickly sometimes. Uh, that is the number you can call. But again, don't abuse this. Office hours. So I'm going to do office hours a little bit differently than probably what you're used to with your face-to-face -face courses. Um, because this is a distance course by design, office hours are going to be held mainly by Skype or through email. Um, we can also schedule office hours over the phone if that works better for you. So generally speaking, office hours will be held on Friday from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Um, I will be logged into my Skype account um, and I'll be available to, for students to speak with at any point during this time. Um, if I'm speaking with one student, uh, at a, I, I can only speak with one student at a time, so if I'm you know, already busy, when you call in with Skype, just wait a few minutes and we should be able to conclude business. Um, I also do office meetings by appointment. Um, so if the 2 to 5 p.m. on Fridays doesn't really fit with your schedule, uh, then send me an email and we'll work out a time that works better and we'll, we can do that either by Skype, by email, or by phone. Um, my Skype address, and this is included in the... Um, syllabus as well, but is just Christopher Johnson, just my name, space between Christopher and Johnson. So, the course description. <clears throat> In the first year writing course, you'll develop your capacity for understanding academic research and analysis through original an original research project and presentation of uh, your results, or of the results of your work for an audience of your peers. You will identify an area of interest within our course theme, and our course theme for um, this section is the musical, political, or the political rhetoric of music. And you will find materials to analyze, develop um, analytical research questions, explore secondary text, and make, make claims that are connected to the evidence that you have discovered. As many researchers do at this stage in their work, you will then reframe what you have learned for a public audience. During the research process, you will be preparing for the English 1110 Symposium by working on your own symposium presentation, a five-minute presentation consisting of 15 um, images, each accompanied by 20 seconds of text. The creation of your symposium presentation will provide significant opportunities for considering the nature of your research, the relationship between visual and written text, and issues of write and craft. So all of that probably sounded like a lot of nonsense. It'll make more sense as um, we progress through the semester. You just have to kind of go with, go with me on this. Um, as far as our specific course material, um, we're going to be looking at the ways that music can be rhetorically political in the world and the way that... Um, it can be used to influence thoughts and ideas, to express opinions, to um, influence minds and emotions. Um, basically, all elements of the way the ways that music can impact a person's psyche and a person's out, outlook on the world around them. Um, general goals and objectives, and this is for all 11, 10 sections. This course fulfills the writing level one general education, that is GE requirement. Throughout the course, weekly overview uh, pages will guide you through assigned reading and writing activities um, in pursuit of these outcomes. So basically what you'll want to do, and I mentioned this in the other video as well, every Thursday um, evening, I'm going to open up access to a new, new module of the course. Um, if you open up the module section on Canvas, scroll down to the week that we're on, let's say for argument's sake, this is week number nine. You'll open up modules, scroll down to week number nine. The first thing under the week number nine heading will be week nine overview. Click on that. There's going to be a video. The video will let you know what we're doing that week. It'll be a, provide a uh, general overview of the materials we'll be discussing, as well as um, maybe some course um, content information. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, <clears throat> and uh, underneath that, we'll have the learning outcomes for the week, so we can keep in mind exactly what it is we're supposed to be doing. Um, a list of assignments um, and a list of readings. So this is your way of keeping yourself on task and on schedule, right? We have a week from when that module drops on Thursday evening until the next Thursday um, to accomplish everything that is within the module. And I can track students' progress as we go along. This is a uh, general. This is a generally flexible course, but it's not self-paced, so we will need to try to keep on task. Um, so as a level one. Um, 
writing instruction course, um, English 1110, uh, our, our, our expected learning outcomes for English 1110 are that students are able to communicate um, using the conventions of academic discourse, and this is the kind of thing we'll pick up as we move along through the semester, and that students, students be able to read critically and analytically. Now those are very, very vague sounding, but they have very, very specific meanings, and we'll get into more details as the semester progresses. But for right now, just know that by the end of the semester, you'll be able to write using the conventions of academic discourse, something that's going to be vital no matter what your major happens to be. Um, and you'll also be able to read critically and analytically, a skill that passes, uh, or that, that, that touches on every, every part of life, uh, both within the world of college and in the wider world of reality. So. Whether we're here in the academy or whether we're out in the world working, um, you're going to be able to need or to think. Or you're going to be, you're going to need, excuse me, to think critically and to read critically and to think analytically and read analytically and take these skills and transfer them um, to other applications. Course materials, main course material or our main course textbook is going to be um, Kristen Faraby and uh, Edgar Singleton and Mike Beershanks, The Writer's Companion: A Guide to First Year Writing, with excerpts from Writing Analytically. Um, I've included the um, bibliographic information for this in the syllabus. You should have a copy of it now. We ordered enough copies through the uh, student bookstore, but if for some reason you didn't get a hold of one, contact me, um, let me know, and we'll figure out how to get you a textbook. Um, additional reading. So over the course of the semester, we're going to have additional readings tacked on. This will be under the module heading. So when you open up the module at the beginning of the week, um, you'll be able to see readings and videos and other you know little things that I've attached for you guys to check out. Um, and any required course readings, I'll also put under the overview section. So when you click on modules and then drop down to overview and you go to that week's readings, you're going to be able to see not only the readings from the uh, required textbook, but also any additional readings that I've um, added on to uh, to that module for the week. So course technology. Um, under this section, basically I provided a list of all of the things that we'll need to, um, uh, to have access to in order to be a participant in this online distance course, um, as well as uh, technical support services that you guys can contact if you run up uh, against any tech issues. Trust me, there will be tech issues. There are always tech issues. I understand. Um, it's not necessarily going to be a, um, an ex uh, a, a, a valid excuse if a piece of technology fails and you're not able to submit an assignment. I would consider that you know, uh, you're know you supposed to be able to plan around it. But if you run up against anything catastrophic, do let me know about it and we'll be able to work something out for getting an assignment in. Um, here we go. Grades. So we're doing uh, grading this for this particular course off of a point system. And this is a little bit different than what some of you are used to. Mostly people have done percents and stuff in the past. Um, for the total, uh, the total value of points that you can earn in the course are 1,000. Um, each of our assignments worth a variable number of points. The analytical research project, which is going to be our um, big sort of uh, framing piece, is worth 400 points. The symposium, which we'll discuss in later weeks, is worth 250 points. Process posts, which is basically um, me keeping you on task throughout the semester, working on your analytical research project, the, that's worth 90 points. And then um, written participation, 260 points. So this written participation, this um, bears me speaking for uh, an extra moment or so on, um, will be through a site called WEX. Um, in about week four, I'll introduce you to WEX. Um, what this effectively does is allow students to share elements of their analytical research project anonymously with all other participants of English 1110. So it's everybody in this course plus everybody in every other section of English 1110 working on this uh, same project at the same time. Um, and it anonymously shares the writing that you've done with another student for uh, peer feedback. So they're not going to know who you are, but they'll be able to read through your paper, go through it, give critical feedback so that you can go back and make improvements to your own writing. Um, and this goes through about two different students before it comes back to you. So you'll be able to get not just one person's perspective, but two, two people's perspective or maybe even three. Um, in addition to this, I'll have access to everybody's WEX record, so I'll know who's written what, um, is the feeding, feedback you're given, uh, giving substantive, or is it cursory? Um, how useful is the feedback you're giving? How useful is the feedback you're getting? And I'll be able to comment on your materials myself. So this is basically a way for you to get peer review as well as 
my comments on um, the writing you're doing. It's all about improving our writing. It's all about workshopping our writing. You can think of this as a very low stakes, very kind of friendly way of um, engaging in the writing process, but it also, as you can tell from the point value, um, is fairly significant for the course. So late assignments. Um, generally speaking, I do not accept late assignments. Um, again, I understand something catastrophic comes up. Um, you know, life happens. There's nothing we can really do about it. Let me know if something like that happens. All other cases, if you sleep in, if you just forget, I don't take late work. Um, if you do submit an, a late assignment, one full letter grade is going to be uh, taken away for each day past the due date. And just to say this now, it should go without saying, but just to get it out there, um, I do count weekends. Um, I'm not counting just like class meetings, I'm counting every single day. So if it's due on a Thursday, then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all of those count as days. Um, the grading scale in the course. Um, this is just a, just the general OSU scale. You guys can go back and review this at any time, but um, an A is 100 to a 93, A minus 93 to 90, B plus 90 to 87, B 87 to 83, um, B minus 83 to 80, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, faculty feedback and response time. So grading and feedback, I get back to you, generally speaking, within 72 hours. Most of the time, it's much uh, sooner than that. Email, um, I try to respond to student emails uh, within 24 hours during the week and 48 hours over the weekend. And discussion board posts, um, generally 48, uh, I, I will check these every 48 hours and I'll try to respond to you um, whenever I do check those. So attendance, participation, and discussions. Attendance, how are we gonna do attendance for an online course? Well, basically, I'll be monitoring when you're accessing the site and how long you're accessing the site for and what all you're doing when you are accessing the site. Um, what I'll generally expect is for students to log in about three times per week. Um, I mentioned before that this course is designed not to be self-paced, but rather um, to be flexible. Uh, so, you know, we're, you're not going to be able to go through and do five or six modules in one weekend. It's not that kind of course. That's not the way we're working. Instead, I'll expect you to log in three times a week, every week, for every module, um, in order to work your way through the material on there. Generally speaking, you know, this will um, allow you to get through the material without it being rushed, um, and, you know, you'll, you'll produce a better product that way. Um, and we'll also be grading on uh, student participation. So this is participation in discussion forums. I'm going to be grading on the level of participation. So if you just comment cool, that's not really participating. That's just jumping in. Um, so reading directly from the syllabus, whereas an in-person class, we would discuss concepts and readings with each other in real time. In this online class, we'll be doing the, this work in the discussion boards. Um, just as with discussion allowed, some people write more than others, and that's fine, but everyone must participate, and this participation will count for a large proportion of your participation grade. So give substantive feedback. Engage with your fellow classmates. This is class time. I know it's online, and you're doing it um, whenever it's convenient, whenever, whenever it happens to be convenient for your schedule, but you can think of the time you've set aside to work on this material as class time, and it should be treated like class time. Um, discussion and communication guidelines, so writing style, um, you don't have to be formal, but don't be too casual. So don't write in text speak, but you don't have to write in academic prose for the discussion boards. Uh, tone and civility, um, we're, tr we're trying to be a supportive learning community. This is a writer's workshop for all of us. We're all trying to, you know, work on our skills and get better. Um, so be civil with one another. Don't be uh, hostile or combative just for the sake of being hostile or combative. That being said, uh, engage with one another. So if you you know find points of disagreement, and you absolutely will, especially with our course topic, if you find these points of disagreement, engage those points. You know, find out why do we disagree? What specific points do we disagree on? What do we have in common? Uh, what kind of convert? What what can we learn from this conversation? What kind of conversation are we having? Um, citing your sources. So when we have academic discussions, I will expect sources to be cited in standard MLA format, and when we do turn in formal uh, written assignments, I will expect them to be cited in standard, excuse me, MLA format um, for the purposes of everyday post to the discussion board. You will you won't have to cite sources. You can think of that as being general conversation versus something turning in that I'm turning in as my official work. Uh, backing up your work. So 
whenever you make an argument in this class, I'm going to refer to it as a claim. When you make a claim, you're making an argument, you're making a, um, an appeal to truth. You're saying, what I'm saying right now is absolutely true. Well, when you make a claim like that, when you say that what you're saying is absolutely true and the rest of us should um, fall in line, we should agree, we should see things your way, I will expect you to um, back up this position with uh, either cited academic sources or with uh, some other force of rhetoric, which we'll discuss in uh, week two and week three. Um, but basically, I won't let um, opinions stand in the course that are not supported uh, by objective fact. And that's just generally the way that uh, academic writing works, and it's good practice to get it. Uh, it's good practice to master and a good habit to get into. So that's the way that we're going to be treating everything from discussion boards to formal assignments. So other course policies, this really should go without saying. Um, academic integrity, uh, cheating will not be tolerated. Um, with this kind of course, it would be a mistake to attempt anyway, just because of the way that it's designed. It's the final assignment is scaffolded. We're all doing original research. It's not really conducive to that kind of thing. But, you know, I just have to say it. Um, absolutely zero tolerance for um, uh, violations of uh, the academic integrity policy. Um, resources for students. There's a list of uh, resources on here. You can contact the First Year Writing Project Director, the Writings Program's um, om Omsbudsman. Oh, that's an odd word. Uh, the Research Tutor, the Writing Center, Counseling and Consultation Services, Student Advocacy Center, and a number of others. Um, as far as uh, accessibility, um, if you need accommodations, uh, you can either contact the uh, Office of Student Life Disability Services, or you can send me an email privately and we can work something out and we, we don't necessarily have to go through them if you don't want to. Um, just be sure to, you know, let me know um, what's going on. You can do this privately and I encourage you to do it privately. Um, and then we can move forward from there. Um, and then accessibility and course technology, the same kind of thing goes. Um, if you're having trouble uh, getting access to anything you need for the course, let me know. Um, Generally speaking, all you should need, all you should absolutely have to have access to is an internet-capable computer and a word processor like Microsoft Word or something like that. Um, but if you have if you're having an issues um, getting access to these materials, again, let me know and we'll be able to work something out. All right, that long-winded discussion was uh, an overview of our syllabus for the course. Um, if you have any questions at all, again, feel free to contact me and let me know. Um, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks.